you to? Who is preaching to you? Who is talking to you? You might want to go another way, but God is saying that do not behave like Peter that look elsewhere. Why did he look elsewhere? Maybe probably he was thinking, oh, I can do it on my own. And that situation made it to fall in same water. And if that would be us, swaying our way out of it. So, brethren, the, the focus of today is we should focus our eyes on the world. When we are in that point, we should call upon Jesus. We shouldn't look elsewhere. When we look elsewhere, we might not get it right. We might even have more problems to ourselves. So, brethren, may we not let the word of God depart from our eyes. Amen. Let our eyes be filled with the word and not the circumstances that, are around, that surround us. So we may not sink Amen. like the way Peter did. Amen. May God bless his word in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And let us all stand up on our feet as we take the exercise with them. Hallelujah. Amen.
and he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us ask God for forgiveness to be saved, the Lord. Ask, um, pray for anyone who wants to be saved. Anyone you know who wants to be saved, just pray for yourself. Hallelujah, God. Just for the salvation, Lord. Pray that you
worship for him. I want you to worship him in your world, this morning. Worship him in your own way, this morning. We came to worship him. We came to exalt him. I came to worship him. I came to exalt him. God, now I worship him.
you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. Of the 
king and the presence of the word of God, there is authority, there is power. And I come with the roar of the Holy Ghost. The real authentic lion of Judah. The roar and whatsoever has been roaring at you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command every storm, every wind. Even if you have been drowning already. By the reason of you attending this service this morning. Receive the help of God. 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 In every aspect of your life. Receive help now. Receive help now. So he kept driving it. 
So until he starts giving problem on the engine. So what he now does, he will buy oil and keep topping it. He said, I will not service it. He was stopping it until one day. One day, the engine knocked. And he now called me. He called me to come and help him too. Hallelujah. Amen. Your engine will not knock. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know one problem with life is that because we are all interconnected. That's why you, you must love me enough to want me when I'm going out of the way. And I will do my best to also warn you when you are going out of the way. Because whatever you do, whether directly or indirectly, it will affect you. And whatever I do, directly or indirectly, it affects you. Unless you are not connected with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why when we when the word of God, the word of God is for us, is for our own edification, is for our lifting. When you come to church, you come that your strength be renewed. You come to have fellowship with the brethren. Because sometimes it's like taking your battery to, to a battery charger to charge your battery. Before you leave here, you become supercharged. You become supercharged. Because as we are all connected, if you read the visions, it says all joint. We are jointly together, joint as supply. You come with your worship, you come with your melody, you come with your praise, you come with your dancing, you come with your prayer, you come with your tongue. All of us join together. We are defining ourselves, we are charging ourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Never you come to God's presence empty mm. without anything. Never. So prepare yourself before you leave home. Oh, yes. Begin to charge yourself because you will charge somebody. Oh, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't come depressed. Even if you are depressed. When you come here, you are free. When you come, even that depression already is a punishment. Mm. It's a punishment for being ungrateful. Anybody that is depressed, look that person very well. He's not a grateful person. Some people are not grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Bear with me the way I'm talking about. I'm only in my own element. Hallelujah. Amen. So the more grateful you are, the more joyful your heart. Joy fills your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. So when we come, encourage yourself so that you can encourage another person. Help me preach to somebody. Say, no, be your own bad pass. Say, no, be your own bad pass. No, be your own bad pass. Yes, sir. That's true, sir. My own is not the worst. Your own is not the worst. It's not the worst. Your own is not of us. I look around now and I'm seeing some of the most privileged people. Oh. Come on, let's put those hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Rejoice. Rejoice. When you are grateful for the little, more comes. Those who are ungrateful for the small, even the small they have will be taken from them. That's good job. So you must be thankful. Every day you wake up, give thanks to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And today I'll be talking. I just want to share some things with us. You know, over the week we've been talking about certain things. We talked about uh, we've been talking about the kingdom of God. We've been talking about the kingdom of God. And we brought in some dimensions into the kingdom of God. We've been looking at it in the Bible study. I want to encourage everybody. 
Please. Attend Bible study. Attend Bible study. Because when we come for Sunday service, is a Sunday service is a praise service. Yes, sir. It's actually a celebration service. It's not, it's not where we actually do a too much competition or going in depth. Because there are some issues that are family issues. They call it family matters. You don't solve family matters on the air. Hallelujah. Amen. Otherwise, you'll be misunderstood by those who are not members of the family. So a lot of issues we have today in the body is because of media. Because we are on air. So those who does not understand the roots or the context by of, of the basis of your teaching or argument, we take it from halfway, boom, and start shouting on the social media. But they take you out of context. Many of them are not even part of the family. They don't even understand the, the, the culture, the tradition of the family. Amen. Amen. So that was why Jesus was quick to tell Nicodemus, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see it. He cannot, he cannot see it. You cannot, you cannot really understand the way the kingdom works. You cannot understand how it functions. You can look at afar and think you understand it. No. You can stay at afar, think how oh, I know. You just look at the way these guys are playing. Uh, Victor is playing this keyboard and then realize he's tapping the bass. You just look at it. See, it's easy now. Is it not just to do two? Two. Two. You think it's easy because you are looking at it from afar. You do, you do not understand it. And many people try to explain what they had not even involved with. You know how young men, we all did that thing because we were young at a point in time, even though we are still young. Hallelujah. You know, we are young men. Things they can help you to train children more, especially when we're in church. Young men know how to train children. They know everything. They know everything. Say, so I wish, I wish this child is my own now. <laughs> Hallelujah. They will tell you everything. As the child, they will explain it to you. You can't talk too much. You just keep quiet and be watching. Because very soon it will become your talk. Then when they see what you see, because you have seen it, you, you yourself, you have done like that before. Until when they now start having their own. You know? I'm gonna, let, let's celebrate all our parents in this house. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let's celebrate our parents in this house. Come on! Make some noise! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! You know why? You know why? I look around and I see children that are well behaved. Hallelujah. That love the Lord and serving the Lord. Hallelujah. That means somebody has taken time to do a good work on them. Hallelujah. Imagine our kids. See who now. She's in charge of media. Hallelujah. Maintaining glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible says, Our children shall be taught of the Lord, and grace shall be their peace. Imagine if, it's, if these kids are not here. Imagine if we have not directed them, instructed them that they listen to us. Imagine if we have not done that good work, if we have not spent that time, if we have not committed to it. It is commitment. It takes commitment to get the job done. Yes, sir. Every good work you have seen anywhere, 
is done out of pain, sacrifice, commitment, diligence. And that's why I say we celebrate our parents in this house. Hallelujah. God has helped our children. Even when they enter university. Hallelujah. Some people they are home when they enter university, they miss from there. But thank God for the grace upon this house. Amen. God has kept our children. Amen. Even in the midst of lions, God has protected them. Hallelujah. Amen. None of you will go astray Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You will not go astray. You will fulfill purpose. Amen. You make your parents proud. You make the kingdom Amen. proud. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are light. You are light. You are light. God has sent you out as light to shine in darkness. Because we represent the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's important that we talk to ourselves. Because we are a family. We are in the kingdom. Jesus said, my kingdom is not meat and bread. The kingdom of God is not meat and bread. But it is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So anything that is taking away your peace, that does not stand for righteousness, that does not bring joy, know that the, the kingdom is not there. The kingdom is what? It's not there. No matter the spirituality of anybody who comes to tell you. I see some people who are so spiritual that there is no joy again in their life. They have missed it. They have entered into error. They have contacted demon. Some people carry demonic presence. Think it's the presence of God. No. It's like a woman becomes so spiritual that you cannot minister to the husband. You can't take care of your husband. You can't look after your family. You have missed it. Person have missed it. So when we come to church, it is in church we are being straightened out. Because we are all looking at the mirror of the word of God and looking at ourselves. I will tell you, say, my brother, you are wrong. Based on scriptures, your attitude is questionable based on scriptures. Hallelujah. So we've been talking so much in the, in the, in the, in the Bible study. Hallelujah. Please, I encourage you to be part of it. Your life depends on it. And also as a teacher, even if you are not a teacher in church, you are a teacher in your home, you are teaching your wife, your children, your husband. A teacher must be taught. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want us to look at the subject of believing. Lord, I believe, Lord, I believe that all things are possible because I believe, Lord. that Lord I receive. Lord I receive. Lord Father, 
thank you for the entrance of your work rich light and understanding to the simple. Lord, we ask, oh God, give us a simple heart. Amen. Lord, that we may be able to receive your word, oh God, and embrace it, oh God. And, and I let it, oh God, permeate through our spirit. Uh, that it may have uh, that it may have effect on our bodies Amen. that it may produce the kind of result that you want from us father lord god in heaven i pray oh god holy spirit use me oh god use me as an instrument in your hands to touch somebody Amen. to somebody who is in need who is in need for your word? Who is in need for your word? Somebody, oh God, who needs to, to move, oh God, from the situation they are into a better place that you have ordained for them. Father, Lord God in heaven, oh God, I pray, oh God, let your word come with power. Amen. Let it come like a hammer. Let it break, oh God. Let it come like a fire. Let it consume, oh God, every 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 everything that it stands, every every wall of resistance. Let them come down Amen. by the reason of your word Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, thank you, oh God. You, Lord. Lord, we charge this atmosphere, oh God. Lord, we charge this atmosphere, oh God. We use the fire of the Holy Ghost to drive away every evil bed that seals the world from the heart of man. Lord, we set them on fire. 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 Lord, we must circumcise our ears, oh God. Let there be a word for everyone, oh God. Let there be a word for everyone, oh God. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us quickly open to the book of Genesis chapter 3, 1 to 6. Then we also read from the book of John chapter 3, verse 16. You know, I'm not a specialist when it comes to carving out the uh, uh, topics of sermon. And you should know that by now. Amen. But you can give it your own topic. Hallelujah. But it's something, the major focus of, of this uh, teaching or discussion uh, is believe. Believe. Believe is foundational to, to the kingdom of God. You know, it's foundational to the kingdom of God. So it's an important aspect of our lives. If we need to achieve everything that God has really ordained for us, believe. Okay, Victor, thank you for, for that this thing. Thank you, Joe. You can just leave it and sit down for now. When you can come later. You know I'm a psalmist. So I'm a psalmist. Hallelujah. <laughs> so you are taking me into, into a, a realm I don't want to go now. So let, let me try to stay on this realm because we just want to talk. Amen. Amen. Now, if we read that place, the Bible says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, had God said, had God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth not know that in the day, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, we prayed a prayer this morning. Say, whosoever is the thighs, 
and that is because of the lustfulness of their eyes. Greed. That's what traps us. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took all the food thereof and did eat. She took it. Not the devil gave her. And did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. If we look at the book of John chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. 17. For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned Sorry. already. Because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Father, let your light come. Amen. Open our hearts, O God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you follow these scriptures, you discover from here you can even get the, the, the root of the whole matter that is all about belief. It's all about belief. And I will not want to bother us to try to give us the, the definition of belief. Because we all know what belief, the meaning of belief. Because even in our natural life, in the natural life, in the families, even children born by the same parents, they all have different beliefs. They all have different beliefs. So I said, I don't believe this. I don't believe that. And you see, whatsoever you believe is you are a product of your belief. Yes. So every action you are seeing today in your life, every result you see in your life today, trace it back to what you believe. What, are you, what do you believe? Do you believe God? Do you believe His word? Do you believe his word? Because even the way you behave towards a thing, the way you behave towards a thing is based on the belief you have for that thing. The way you behave towards a thing, be it in marriage, be it towards money, be it towards church, be it towards servants of God, you treat a thing, you treat people based on the belief you have for them. So, there's no need to talk too much. There's no need, because you yourself, you can see yourself through how you behave. You know, sometimes even in church, you know, we try to talk about behavior, behavior, you know, we talk about behavior. But you see, it's not about behavior. Because you cannot change anybody's behavior. You can't change. That's why when we talk that like Christianity is not behavior modification. But it is transformation that happens inside of you because of the belief you have on the word of God. If you believe the word of God, it will transform you from inside out and will change your behavior. Your behavior will automatically change. 
So instead of trying to change somebody's behavior, we need to really begin to question what do they believe? What is what do you believe? Somebody is doing something because I've come to discover that no matter how you try to change somebody, until they come to believe in that thing. Because anything a man believes in, he is committed to it. Hallelujah. Amen. Anything a man believes in, he is committed to, to it. If you even, do you know, do you know, if, if you what, anything you believe, you are committed. If you believe in a marriage, you become committed to that marriage. You are committed, even sometimes to death. Sometimes to death. Look at that girl that was killed in the US. Somebody will say, why didn't she run away? But you know she was committed. Unfortunately, she committed to the wrong person because she, she was committed to a demon mm. who not killed her. Who not killed her. But it's not enough. He could have killed her body. But the truth is that the spirit, mm. the blood of that girl will be crying, will be judging him. Mm. Wherever he is, he can never have peace again. Yes. That's why Jesus said, do not fear the person who can destroy your body? He can only destroy your body, but not your spirit. Hallelujah. Because your spirit, your belief is a thing of the heart. It's a thing of the heart. So, any way you are behaving today, whether your behavior towards money, towards God, towards each other, your behavior is go and check your belief. What do you believe? Some people don't believe God yet. When we believe God, and when God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing becomes what? Become an addition. It will guide you. And it will be visible. When people see you, they know what you put first. Those who put their family, wife, children, husband, first before church, before God, is visible. It is visible. Even if they don't tell you, I'm more than enough not to tell you. Because at my age now, you cannot beat me. <laughs> I'm an old man. You don't beat an old man. So an old man is qualified to say some things. Because you cannot beat an old man. Hallelujah. So your belief is very important. So if we look at the, at the scriptures where we read in, in John in, 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 in the in, in John chapter uh, uh, three sixteen, which is a very common scripture that we all read, the Bible says, "God so loved the world." Let's go back to that place so that we just walk through it gradually. He said, "For God so much loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son." Hallelujah! God has given that gift. He has given everything to us, everything that pertains to life and godliness. God has given everything to us. Hallelujah. Amen. He said that who but did not give a He said, Whosoever believeth in him should not not will not perish. It's not a guarantee. Because he knows that people can still make a choice to perish. He said, should not. So that when I'm talking to my children, I say, if you have done the right thing, as you claim to know. We will not be having this conversation. You won't be having this conversation in the first place. 
If we believe, you will not perish. But if you are perishing in any area of your life, check your belief. Check what you believe concerning that thing. Any area you are struggling with, check what you believe. And if you have also been enslaved and entrapped, you are also entrapped based on belief. Hallelujah. Because it is, it is a thing, belief is a thing of the heart. He said, whosoever believes in him should not pray, but have everlasting life. God wants us to have an everlasting life. The kind, God's kind of life. The life of God. That is the provision that God has made for us. Zoe, Zoe, the life of God. Life that begat life. Life that produces life. The light that cannot be limited. Hallelujah. Light that cannot go under. That's why God never wants any of his children to live in obscurity. Mm -hmm. You are not a second class citizen. Amen. In the kingdom of God, he has made us first. We are all first. So always see yourself. Have that assurance in you. He said, he said, he said now, let, now let's jump to 17. Quickly, he said, For God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world. No, that's not why. He did not just come to bring like, like this message now, it's not a message of condemnation. Sometimes some people get out and say, Pastor, use me to preach today. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe, maybe the person has not been coming to church regularly. I say, Pastor, you me preach today. Or maybe the message is coming late. <laughs> you know, today is one of my happiest days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. My anointing doubled. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Mountain moved. Hallelujah. Mountain moved. Hallelujah. You know, when we come together, you see, when we come together in, in our strength, yeah. mm. in our strength, yeah. there is no force, there is no enemy that can stop us. Yeah. When all of us come together as a team, mm. it's like that Nigerian super team that time. Mm. They call it the dream team. Mm. Since after the dream team, we've not had that team again. For God to help us to bring that team together. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why anywhere you go in Europe, people will ask you. Okocha. Kanu. Yaro. You know, Omokache. You know, they know them. They love Nigerians because of the team. Do you know people can love us because of this team? That God has put together. Yes, if we actually work as a team. Mm -hmm. But I was teaching on, 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 on Thursday. I said one of the three gateways through which the enemy can destroy a believer is either through the was the first one. The three gateways. Covenant. Covenant, ignorance, and the and, we will, and disobedience. Covenant, ignorance, and disobedience. Three gateways. But there are also three gateways through which your life can be blessed. By covenant, you can be blessed by covenant. Knowledge. But obedience, ignorance becomes knowledge. And it, it, disobedience becomes obedience. Your life is open for blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. So, we, so, so it is the word of God. It's not targeted at any person, but it is to make us good, so that we can be what God has ordained us to be. He said, "But the word," he said, "He said, but that the word through Him might be saved." It is through the word of God that we are saved. 
If not for the word of God that I had as a kid, by now I would have been an addict. If not for the word, influence of the word of God that saved me, I would not be here today. I would have been a junkie somewhere because I grew up in the rough part of Lagos. Don't call it to. <laughs> don't call it. Because people here don't have to break bottle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Most of the people I went to school with today, most of them are dead. They are gone. Because of the influence of the society. We came up, we grew up when, when this drug, when cocaine became popular, newly, when it came, it became. So if you go to Akela and all those areas, you see a lot of them. These were people we went to school together. So but for the influence of the word of God, that was what saved me. He said, he said he did not come to condemn me. Sometimes he just said, oh, you, are too, you are being too hard on us. You don't want us to enjoy ourselves. So many have been destroyed. They could not fulfill their destiny. Jesus did not come to condemn you. He only come to save you. By the word of God. He said we are cleansed. We are washed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now jump to 18. He said, he, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are able to believe in the word of God, you will not be condemned. You will not be condemned. God asked Cain, say, if you have done better thing, if you have offered a good sacrifice, it would have been accepted. It would have been accepted. You would not be condemned. But condemnation will only come for refusing to believe. For refusing to believe. What are you believing? What is your belief? He said, but he that believeth is not con but he that believeth not is condemned already. That's why sometimes you don't, I, I, you know, they say somebody cost somebody. No, you don't need to cost anybody. People can attract blessing or attract cause just by their actions. By their actions. He said, he said they are condemned already because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The only reason why people are condemned is because there was a provision for them. He said they did not do what? Believe. They did not believe. There was provision for them, but they refused so believe. If like somebody now say the word of God can heal you, but they did not believe. Let's quickly go to uh, 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 19. He said, and this is the condemnation that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. There was a provision, but they chose instead of choosing light, they decided to do what? To choose darkness. They made a choice. Life is all about choices. What choice are you making? They had options, but they decided to choose. They had options, but they decided to choose the path. Child of God, every day, everybody has options. Everybody has options, but you are going to be judged based on the options you, cho you took. There are options. Hallelujah. Amen. So every day, like God is presenting us with opportunities. Opportunities are calling for our attentions every day. Being you a little child, a little child is also faced with temptation. Yes, sir. Just like an adult, every one of us have our own problems. Mm -hmm. A little child, we have problem of disobedience and obedience. Mm -hmm. And don't touch that bread, bro. Don't touch that bread. We are going to use it for supper. It's an instruction. But the devil, he, 
Go and tell. So why not take the lead? What is bread? What is bread? After all, bread. Is bread is bread not seventy cents? I can't even pay for it. I can't. Even, you can't even buy it. Just go and eat the bread. Take it. And now the child will go. And, we eat the bread. Disobedience. Mm -hmm. Mm. Even as little as that. The way they ask who? No, not me. <laughs> <laughs> not me. The devil say, oh, so hold your ground. Hold your ground. No. Hold your ground. Don't agree. Don't agree. Hold your ground. <laughs> say not me. They will I'll bring it. I will fuck everybody here. No, not me. <laughs> One day. A woman called me and said, he's a pastor. So I don't know what is happening. <laughs> say, uh, who would I, is it not? Spirit. Is this the spirit that is doing this thing? You know, and his devil is teaching the children to, to learn disobedience. And lying. But you have option to obey the word of God, to obey the spirit of God, so that you will not perish. But my prayer is that God will give us the heart Amen. to always listen to the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know what we, be, what we believe is what defines us as a Christian, as believers. If we look at the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, from 19, 19 to 30, let's just quickly uh, just... He said, now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, Stephen traveled as far as Venice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word of God, preaching word none but unto the Jews only. Okay. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene. I don't know, you know, this would be... They are present in their days in, in the present day. I wouldn't know the other day. But these are some places in, I think, in Europe. Or, yeah. Okay, Iraq, in the Middle East. These are names of places, you know. And uh, which, and when they were come to Antioch, speak unto Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. That's the Greeks they are now preaching to. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Hallelujah. A great number believed and turned unto the Lord. You know, because of what they were doing. Let's continue. He said they believed. And he said the, the tidings of these things came unto the ears of, of the church which was in Jerusalem. That's the news. The news. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if we are going to read this thing like in the present day now, we'll be saying the good news of what God is doing through us, through you, mm. through all of us here in Barbriga. He said, and, the, and this tidings, this good news came to the ears of the church which was in Galway mm. or in Nigeria that the bishop had. Mm. Say there are some group of people in Barbriga that are doing exploits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. These are the kind of news fathers want to hear. It makes their life get longer. Mm -hmm. Not news of, I no go agree, we no go agree, we no go agree. <laughs> they want to hear of our exploits. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Hallelujah. They began to send support. Hallelujah. Amen. It will become recognized. Then whenever there is something, they will, they will be sending emissaries. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you have you, you are doing notable work. Mm. And you become recognized. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, let's, let's continue. Let's go. He said, who? When he came and he had the grace of God, he was glad and exhorted them all that, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We should encourage each other. 
We should what? Encourage each other. That's why sometimes we call people on phone. I say, my brother, my sister, I've not seen you for some time. Hope it is well with you. It is not a wrong thing to do. It's not a wrong thing to do. It's care. We are exhorting ourselves. We are encouraging one another because we are a family. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, he said, he said, he said, and they would cleave unto the Lord with purpose. Move, move quickly with me for me, please. He said, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. This type of things bring more people. It brings more people to faith. It brings more people to faith. When they come and they see us joyful in the presence of God, they see us, everybody's holding his own duty, his own department. Everybody's walking in love, in obedience. It makes it, 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 it full of the Holy Ghost. He said, said, people were added unto the Lord. People who want to, people are always attracted to good things. Where it is working. Hallelujah. Amen. So it can work. It can work. It will work. Amen. When we decide to work it. Yes, Don't abandon your own duty post. Oh, you see somebody I say, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm tired. I'm feeling lazy. They wouldn't say it with their mouth, but they, in their action. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, "Oh, you know, see, I, I, I couldn't come to church because I didn't, I didn't have offering." He say, "When, when they are giving the offerings, uh, because I don't have money to give." He say, "He say because of that I don't come to." I say, "In my spirit, I, I, I didn't, I didn't want to rebuke us. If somebody that is that has grown in faith, I would have told her something. I would have said, "You lie! You lie! You lie!" You have money. Only that you don't you do not believe that your money should go to God. You don't believe that your money should go to God. You believe that your money should go to other places. But not to God. You did not give not because you do not you do not have, but because you do not believe that you should give to God. So check your belief. Anything you have not done, go and check what you are believing. Some people believe people on the social media. Don't believe people on the social media. Believe, believe your father and your mother. Believe in this house that you are planted. Believe what we are teaching you from the word of God here because that's what will prosper you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, and much people were added. It will bring people. When they come, they see you the way you are leading. You are singing, you are singing in choir. Everybody, when they say, come by 10 o'clock, we are all here at 10 o'clock, obedience. When somebody comes and says, wow, this is the place. I like order. When things are done orderly. But not you choose to come where you want to come. You choose the time you want to come. People look at us, it does not bring glory to God. They say these are not people of integrity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You must learn to have integrity. You must begin to work on your belief. You must work on your belief. Go to let's move, let's move quickly. He said, he said, then departed Barnabas to Tarsus to Saul. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. And when he had found him, he brought him into, onto Antioch. And it came to pass that the whole year they assembled themselves with the church and touched much, and touched much people. And the disciples were called Christians, Christians first in Antioch. Hallelujah. He said, they gathered people and began to teach them. Imagine when we gather people and we are teaching. Evangelist William is teaching. Mm. 
Hallelujah. Amen. It's teaching the men. It's teaching the men. Men in Babrika, they are coming from everywhere in Dublin. And women. Hallelujah. Amen. Browsing is teaching. Hallelujah. It's teaching young people. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's teaching them the word of God. And you are not only teaching them just what you are also teaching them skills of life, how to succeed. How to succeed. That's why I appreciate Brother and Mama and the uh, mom is in the house. Hallelujah. You know, every evening they gather the young people, sharing the word of God with them, sharing experience with them, sharing knowledge with them. Why would they not excel? Why would they not excel? In church, we do not only teach you spirituality, we also teach you how to succeed in this life because this life is warfare, it's a battle. Many who are supposed to have been millionaires cannot be millionaires because of what they believe. Many have become slaves when they ought to be master because of what they believe. But when you come to church, we knock off those demonic mentality of you and let you know who you are. You are what God has called you to be. So every young person connect in the evening, connect. Connect. Learn how to make money. How to turn your talents into money. Because we need money in this world, in this material world. Money rules. Who tells you money is not good? Money is a defense. But don't be a slave to money. Don't be a slave to money. Don't walk like somebody who has no God. Don't walk like that. Don't go and start lobbying. Hey, and I get the extra shift on Sunday. I hear saying I double. I hear saying I double. Hello, sir. I hear saying I double. Ah, this is our company. I know I will leave at my go. In our company, they didn't pay double. <laughs> so they didn't pay triple. Oh, no, that's Meanwhile, if you go and do double, who will do the work of God? You think it's not? Manage yourself, manage your time. I did not say don't walk. Mm. But let's not walk like people who don't have God. Mm. There must be balance in everything. Mm. There must be. I have been able to, to reach people by the grace of God who began to believe God. Say, God, even though this job is a Sunday job, but please help me. Give me something that will not take my Sunday from you. Amen. It's a demand. Lord, I'm making this demand. Because I believe that on Sunday I should be in church. Uh -huh. I should be in your house. This is what I believe. And if it is your belief, God will make it happen. Amen. Yeah. But you see somebody who God has even helped already. Because how you just look at Say, Sister Angela, Sister Angela has been, been working on Sunday now, and uh, nothing happened now. <laughs> Make myself, I will just look for extra shift and put it on Sunday. You see? <laughs> it's, it's copies. Mm. I remember, I doesn't know if that person is praying, God, help me. Help me, give me, give, me another, give me something that will free me so that I will have time for you. Give me something that will free me so that I have time for you. And immediately God answered that person prayer, boom. Then you yourself who is copying that person, boom, you got that trapped. You got trapped. So we are ensnared by the words of our mouth. And the words of your mouth is based on what, on the thought of your heart, what you think, what you believe. What you believe. That's why the Bible talks about uh, in, in, is it in Romans 10, verse 10. He said, With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. He said, But with the mouth, uh, uh, no. No, let's get, let me, let's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but put it, put it up. Yes. Romans 10. He said, For with the heart, Man believeth unto what? Righteousness. 
your believing is in the heart, is with the heart. It's a heart thing. So any, anything, he said, I said, I before you can confess, that, make a confession that will bring your salvation, you must have believed, you must have settled it in your heart. Mm. Yeah. You must settle it in your heart. Don't live life without settling some issues. Settle the issue before you step out. Then they say, I propose in my heart, I will not defile myself. He settled it before he got there. Mm. Don't wait until you get there thinking that you will settle it. When I get there, I will settle it. Mm. It's a lie. Mm. When you get there, you compromise. Mm. That's why many compromise. Settle it before you get there. That's the secret. Yes, Mama came to, he, he, he went to them at the interview. In as much as I need this job, but please leave Sunday for me. I don't mind doing it in the night, but not the day, because I have an assignment. She told them, I have what? An assignment. She believed that God gave her an assignment. If you have an assignment, you don't joke with it. I have a responsibility. You have a responsibility. Don't go to the, don't just go, ah, say if I don't get this work now, I'll die. Who told you that? You won't die. You serve a God, you believe God. The Bible says hey, the cattle on a thousand hills, they belong to God. God provides. Yes. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Yes. So settle it before you get there. There's some things you will not want to compromise. Settle it before you get there. Because he said, he said, for with the heart man believe it unto righteousness. And with the mouth, believe it first before you start saying it. Don't start saying it when you do not believe. Oh, Jesus. Believe it. What do you believe are concerning your health? What do you believe concerning your finances? What do you believe concerning your purpose in life, your goals? You have what do you believe? What do you believe? The Bible says, it says the believers were first called Christians because they were like Christ. Anytime Jesus calls, the, the Bible in, in, in the book of Mark, he said, Jesus called his uh, the disciples, his apostles, he said, he called them and he gave them authority. The Bible said, he called them to himself. He called them to himself. Then before he gave them the authority. Because they believed in him and they, they began to exercise the authority. So when you come to Jesus as he's calling you to himself, so that he can pour out himself upon you and release authority upon you. So that everywhere you go, you act in authority. Amen. You act in authority. Mm. You are the one to give the stand saying, this is what it is. You have the power to negotiate. Sir. Say, this is what I want. Don't go through life without believing. Otherwise, the devil will lie to you. Look at what happened in, the, in, in Genesis. Where we read. The Bible said that the devil went to the, the, to the woman and, and, and began to question what God has said concerning her. Begin to question the instruction that God has given. The devil also knows the scripture. And he was quoting the scripture. He said, had God said, had God said, you want to bring up doubt in you? Has God said that He's going to heal you? Has God said that He will provide for you? Has God said that 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 that, that you, you you will not be forsaken? Mm. Has God said? And before you know it, you began to doubt God. You need to guide your heart. You need to guide your heart.
you need to guide your heart with all diligence with all diligence he said for out of it are the issues of life guide your heart with all diligence every time Satan is battling with you he's battling with for your heart he's battling for your heart He's fighting your belief. He's fighting what you believe. Sometimes, even when he said, even when, even when the devil comes to attack your body, maybe he comes to attack, inflict injury on your body, maybe in form of sickness, infirmity, or your finances. That is not it. it what he's doing is that he's trying to get to you through your body, to get to your heart, to get to your mind. But the major place he's fighting for is the mind. What do you believe? He said, with the heart, man, believe it. Before your salvation comes, before your salvation comes, you must believe what is what are you believing God for? What salvation? What, what area do you want salvation? What area do you want salvation? Is it that you need a better job? You want salvation in that area? Begin to believe. Is it that you 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 want you want a better life? Begin to believe. Begin to wash your belief. Wash your belief. Wash your belief. Let us rise up on our feet. Is there any way that you have struggle with belief? Is there any way? Is there any way? Is there any area that you are struggling with that you have not believed God? Some people have believed God for some areas of their lives, but they have not believed God for another area. For God wants our belief to be total. Believe is a gateway. It's a gateway to God. Believe is a gateway to God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man, I want us to pray. Talk to God. Forget about offering and life now. It's a time for prayer. It's a time for prayer. Break it down, please. It's a time for prayer. Because the devil has fought our belief. What is battling most of us is actually our belief. What, what do you believe? Some people come to church, but they don't believe in God. They don't believe what the pastor is saying. They don't believe the word of God. God to help you. 
He said, guard your heart with all diligence. With all diligence, do everything to guard your heart. To guard your heart because out of it, a translation says it's a wellspring, a wellspring of life, a wellspring. That is where everything comes out. Everything comes out. Guard your heart. Some people see church and pastors as people who are out there to collect their money. Break it down for me. They see them as people who have come out to collect their money. And that has formed their belief. Even though they are in church, but they are having a wrong belief. And that's why they don't participate. When you have a wrong belief, you will have a wrong, wrong outcome. Ask the Lord to help you. Some are going through emotional problems, emotional torture, issues of emotions. That emotional challenge is because of what you believe. It's not about your feelings. It's not about your feelings, not about emotion. Believe right, you will get the right results. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart with all the legions.
God, the word of God said in the book of Isaiah 26, 3. He said, They are kept in perfect peace. They whose mind, whose heart is stayed on God. Hallelujah. God has given us His Spirit to guide our heart. You cannot guide your heart without the Spirit of God. God has given us the Holy Ghost. That's why the Holy Ghost is given to you to guide your heart, to help you guide your heart. That's why you need the Holy Ghost every day. Ask the Holy Ghost to guide you. That worries, that emotion, that struggles, that anxiety will be a thing of the past. Amen. When you allow the Holy Ghost to guide your heart, to guide you from satanic attack, from warfare. Because your mind is in battle, you know there's a warfare. It is only the Holy Ghost that can guide your heart. It will guide your heart today. Amen. It will guide your heart today. Amen. It will guide your heart today. Amen. It will deliver you from every struggle, Amen. from every attack, Amen. from every satanic incursion. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every negative influence, every negative influence, if there's any way, but adventure, even if the enemy has attacked in any way, even if the enemy has stolen anything, I decree restoration. I decree restoration. I decree restoration. All the years that the locals and the capital world have eaten, Lord, restore by your grace, Lord. Restore by your spirit, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you are the God that makes a way. Where there seems to be no way. But I make a way for your people. Make a way for your people. In this week, make a way for them. I bless you with the blessings of the heaven. I bless you with the blessings of the earth. I bless you with the blessings of the deep. In the mighty name of Jesus, your heart is stayed on God. Your heart is stayed on God. I declare peace. I declare peace. I declare peace. I declare peace. Peace of God fill your house. Peace of God fill your family. Peace of God in your health in every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive strength. Receive strength. Ability to believe. Ability to believe. Ability to believe. You will make you a slice. In the mighty name of Jesus. When the heart was against the wall, and it was as if it was over. Blessing time. Blessing time. You don't say blessing time and back off. You say blessing time and 
lift their face and smile. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, praise God. Hallelujah. Genesis 22, verse 7. It says, And Isaac spoke unto Abraham, his father, and he said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a bond offering? Isaac is asking Abraham, where is the lamb for born sacrifice? God will never send you on a message which you will never embark. Before God sends you a message, he has embarked it. Before God asks for offering, he has given you what to offer. That's right. You don't ask, where am I going to get it? Isaac himself was an offering, but he was asking, where is the offering to make unto God? But he's, he himself is an offering. In all the week, in all the months, we don't need to ask God, what can we offer unto you? Before coming to church, we have made offering available for God. That's right. Because He has placed it into our hands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we are making offering, we also package our tithes. Tithe is ten percent of our earnings, whether monthly or yearly or weekly or daily. It's ten percent. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our offerings. Father, in the authority, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bless you because you have blessed us. Amen. You have blessed us with life, we have blessed us with job, with business, with promotions. Lord, Father, we come back to say thank you for offerings. Thank you, Lord, King of Glory, as many as has lifted up their offerings, those who are here right now and those who are about to give on the way, Lord, we ask you to replenish them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Abundantly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, in their jobs, in their businesses, they shall never lack. They will continue to move forward and forward in the name of Jesus. Amen. Higher and higher in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 All things are possible. Well,
things are possible. Yes. What a service, a blessed service for that matter. I, I thank God. Believe you, believe you. What you believe. What you believe works for you. Praise the Lord. What you believe works for you. May we believe the right, the good thing in Jesus' name. As our pastor have taught us this morning, we believe in good things in the name of Jesus. Our praise the Lord. Announcement time. Our announcement is still the same. Um, you know, two is the hour of grace. It's 11, 10 to 11. Praise the Lord. 10 to 11 every Tuesday. Please, if if you can come in, come in. You know, last week Tuesday was awesome. We have new people around us. God bless her. Bless them. Praise the Lord. Um, on Thursday is our Bible study. Not more. It's not anymore Friday. It's Thursday night. From 6 to 7 p.m. is children's own, and the adult is from 7 to 7 30. We are trying to finish in time, but we know it's a school day. Okay. 7 to 8 30, thank you. you know, we are trying to finish in time, but we know it's a school day, so don't have any reason not to join. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the October program is coming on. We have one, I think, a week left for us. Pastor will talk on that. Praise the Lord. Because there's some instruction in that time of our program, fasting and prayer. I would encourage everybody, everybody, make that time, make that time fast. You know, if, even if you cannot fast six to six, or try, if you can fast even three hours, four hours, make it a duty. You know, little by little, little by little, little by little, you know, you will get better. Praise the Lord. And please, please, if you are taking medication, if you are taking medication, I know you cannot fast. Don't fast, but believe God for him in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Um, School of Ministry is still open. Please, if you want to enroll, please reach out to I myself or Deaconess. God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, okay, Pastor have announced the young people. Um, okay, young people they are not meeting today. People are meeting physically here today. Yeah, praise the Lord. Every of every young person in the house, please. From 13 years upwards, you can join them. You know, they are having their physical activities today, and God will bless you. They are learning a lot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, praise the Lord. And in the house, <laughs> um, it's not like I'm marketing. I'm not marketing anybody. I'm not marketing anything. Praise the Lord. But please, this is the house of God. And you know, if it's, it's things of God, I like, you know, saying things about it. If you don't have Bible and you need, you know, it's not easy to get Bible in this island. Sometimes you look for Bible, they ask you, other is from Belfast, other is from this person. We have somebody who says Bible in this island. Praise the Lord. We have Pastor Irene. So if you need Bible, it's encouraging. If you need Bible, even if you have your phone, you still need physical Bible. Praise the Lord. So if you need it, go to her. She's there. God bless you. And God bless everybody, every one of us. Do have a great week in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Okay. And to just add a, a little of my voice to that, even our children buy Bibles for them, physical Bible. I know digital is good, but you see, transition is a gradual thing. Yes, sir. I discovered that even the schools that are into digital learning, like uh, uh, at that the school they are going to, they have digital, their iPad, and they still have physical books. So they don't make the transition so sudden, boom. You know, if it's too sharp, you cause trouble. So transition is a gradual thing. Uh, so because of we who are still around, you know, by the time we have come, maybe people like Ron Lord and uh, mm -hmm. the people will be, will be using digital praise and worship and uh, you know, you know, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. But for now, please. Parents, buy Bible for your children. Yes. Uh, it's good. Uh, you see, there are some things uh, you cannot take it away. You know, there are things, there are a lot of testimonies to the fact that uh, it's good. You know, I know, I know digital is taking a lot, but buy Bible for your children. Let them look at it, let them read it. If you can buy little novels for them, buy books for them, they can go to the library and read physical books. Let them also have physical Bible. Let them walk with it too. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those days we who use physical Bible were able to memorize more Bible classes. 
like this digital world now. So it's not debate, but the advantages are there. Let's rise up on our feet. So October 1st is coming up. I want to celebrate every one of us who contributed last week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, particularly our children, you know. Let's celebrate our young people. Hallelujah. You know, it was as if it was last, if I, it was young people that did last Sunday. It was last young people that contributed. So, the, in fact, that's why the Bible says, Happy is he. Those people is full of them. He say they will stand at the gate. Yes. Imagine if the young people just raise us over a thousand last Sunday. Yes. So when they when the adults, hallelujah. Yes. That's why we don't bring lazy people. Amen. I don't want to preach. But if you if you stay near me, you know I don't like I don't like excuses. No. And I don't like people who are weak. But never you be weak. Never you be weak. Never pray to be weak. Amen. Some people they say, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You know that's why like, wherever I am, anywhere you see me, maybe we are having to do something. And somebody say, ah, only me. Maybe we want to floor this church now. Somebody say, ah, leave it for me, only me win. I will floor it. I said, no. I will not agree. Some people will be clapping for the person. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. They are happy because they are not involved. One person will take all the blessing. Always be involved. Always be involved. When they are giving, give. If you do not have, ask God, bless me. So that I can be, I can be a giver. Ask God to bless you. God will bless you. The Lord will increase you. You will have money to give. Yeah. When your mates are giving euros, you will give euros. Yeah. When they are giving pounds, you will give pounds. Yeah. When they are giving, you will have plenty of nairas in millions. Yeah. So give in millions in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. You are not a lacquer. You are not a lacquer. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So please, adult, if you have not redeemed, if you have not done something, do. And please take up, take permission from work. Take permission from work. All of us are going to go away. All of us are going to where? To go away. Amen. Amen. If you know, see, start doing work down. Start doing work down. So that you will not work on that thing. That's what they do in, in companies. Because you will go on holiday in Christmas and New Year. They start doing work down. So start doing work down. So that on that day, that Friday and that Sunday, you will not be found working. And ask God to give you, bless you specially. If you need to go and order uh, accommodation to stay. But we are bringing the bus, we take us two days. In the morning, in the evening. So and we are going to leave early. We have to leave here at least around the latest. We are looking at half four. So if you are going to take permission from school, Daddy, please take. If you are going to take permission from work on that day, take it. It's Friday, 22nd of October. It is important to us as a church, as a family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, this is called patriotism. Yes, sir. You must, if you can be patriotic to do other people's own, be so much more, be much more, be patriotic to do your own. This is your own. Yes. Say, it is mine. It is mine. Yes. Imagine when all of us go in our number. Yes. God will be exalted. Yes. So please, I do not want to go there and look like somebody who does not have people. Yes, when they say, well, where is Babrika? Yes. Give me a light. You will be there. Amen. Somebody say, I'll be there. Now, yeah, now, you need to put your belief into practice. I want you to first believe that you will be there. I'll be there. Yes, believe it first that you will be there. Amen. And declare it, and God will make it happen for you. Amen. That is how to win. Yes. 22nd and Sunday is. 22nd is Friday. Sunday is 24th. 24th. Yes. 
those are the two days. So, but we are going to do, do Hallelujah Night. We'll talk about that later. Let's just hold our hands together as we, you know, with this COVID thing. Some of the things we do in church. Hallelujah. Spiritual Spiritual holding. It is well. It is well. Let's hold our spirits together. <laughs> Bide us together, Lord. Bind us together with God that cannot be broken. Christ, the love of God, Amen. and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit.